This video will demonstrate how to get a US Robotics 3G cellular modem connected to a GSM cellular network, such as AT&T, T-Mobile, Vodafone, and many others. First, there are a few requirements before you can get connected. You'll need to contact a cellular service provider for a subscription to a data plan on a 3G GSM cellular network. Ask your USR sales representative if you need help finding a cellular service provider. The SIM card that you receive from the cellular service provider must be installed into the modem. For a demonstration of installing the SIM into the modem, watch the USR 3500 SIM card installation video at the US Robotics channel on YouTube. If the cellular network you're using requires an access point name, you'll need that from your cellular service provider. If the cellular network you're using requires an assigned username and password, you'll need those from your cellular service provider. And you'll need a computer with a DB9 serial port and a terminal emulation application, such as HyperTerminal or PuTTY or TerraTerm, for example. If your computer doesn't have a DB9 serial port, you can convert the computer's USB port into a serial port with a USB to serial cable that's widely available. To get connected, first attach the antenna that's included with the modem to the SMA connector labeled main on the modem's back panel. Next, connect the modem to your computer using the DB15 to DB9 cable that's included with the modem. Now, launch your computer's terminal emulation application. In this demo, I'll use PuTTY. Choose a serial connection. Select the COM port that is associated with the serial port. Set the serial parameters for 115.2 kilobits per second, 8 bits, 1 stop bit, no parity. I'll set PuTTY for a large font, and then open. Now, power up the modem and wait for the power-up messages to finish. The USR 3500 communicates via command line interface using AT commands similar to a dial-up modem. Type AT and enter. The modem should respond OK. Use the plus CGREG question command to verify that the modem is registered with the cellular network. A response of 01 indicates that the modem is registered. A response of 00 would indicate not registered. If the modem reports that it's not registered, you must resolve the cellular registration issue before proceeding. Review the SIM installation video and confirm that the SIM is properly installed. And refer to the USR 3500 Getting Started Guide about checking signal strength. If the SIM installation and the signal strength are good, but the modem is still not registered, contact your cellular service provider to verify that the SIM is properly provisioned. Once the cellular registration is confirmed, Enter the APN into the modem. Most GSM data networks require an APN, but if your cellular network doesn't require an APN, you may skip ahead to the verify connectivity part of this video. If the cellular network does not require a username and password, you'll enter this command to set the APN. If the cellular network does require a username and password, you'll enter this command to set the APN. The APN is automatically saved into non-volatile memory. In this example, the network does require an APN, 
but does not require a username and password. So I'll use the $CGDCONT command to configure the modem with the APN. The APN for my network is a105.2way.net, so I'll substitute that into the command. The quotation marks are required. Status of zero in the second field of the response indicates that the command was accepted. Confirm that the APN is now configured by using the $CGDCONT question command. The modem will report the content of its four APN slots, numbered 1 through 4. The first slot should contain the APN that was entered, and the other slots should be empty. Once the APN is configured, the modem will automatically open a data path to the Internet. Here are two tests that verify connectivity. Use this command to check that the network has assigned an IP address to the modem. Use this command to ping a server on the Internet. Now I'll demonstrate those test commands. First I'll use the $IP question command to check that the modem has been assigned an IP address. The modem should respond with an IP address. Note that this is the address the cellular network assigned to the modem for this session. If your cellular service provider translates this cellular network address into a public IP address for internet connectivity, do not use the address reported by the $IP question command. Now I'll use the $ping command to ping a server on the internet. Choose the address of a well-known public server. The quotation marks are required. A status of zero in the second field of the response indicates that the command was accepted. Each time a ping packet is returned to the modem, or if the ping times out before the packet returns, the modem will display a status. A status of zero in the second field indicates success. A status of 1070 would indicate that the ping packet has not returned in time, which would suggest that either the server was not reachable or that it didn't respond to the ping. Now that connectivity is verified, and if there are no further settings you need to change, close the terminal emulation application, power the modem off, and unplug the serial cable from the modem and the computer. For online documentation and for technical support, please visit www.usr.com slash support slash 3500. I hope you found this video helpful for getting connected to a GSM cellular network. Thank you for watching and thank you for choosing U.S. Robotics.